All righty. Welcome, everybody. It's Tuesday, and I hope everybody is as excited as I am to do some card making. If this is your first time visiting, my name is Julie Brown. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and welcome. Tonight, we're going to do a really fun card, um, and we're going to, with a vintage twist to it. So it it's going to be lots of fun. And uh, I want to welcome everybody and get some housekeeping out of the way. And then just remind everybody, especially if you're new, um, if you want to make a comment, you can just type in the comments. If you have a question, you can also type in and let me know you're here. Um, and that's how we kind of communicate since I can't hear you talking to me. Um, so let me get some housekeeping out of the way while I'm waiting for people to get online. So this is my February hostess code for anyone that would like to place an order with me this month. You can order through me at juliebrown.stampinup.net. Hey, Mel. Um, and then that's my email. Hey, Janet. Uh, and then I have a Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram page that is under Julie's Creative Stamping. And thanks to Janet, um, I thought my YouTube channel was Julie's Creative Stamping as well. But she tried to look it up for uh, last week, and it's actually Julie Brown dot Julie's Creative Stamping. So I usually upload all of my videos here and uh, onto my YouTube channel. Uh, and I always thought when I look at it, it says Julie's Creative Stamping. So I did not know it had that Julie Brown dot at the beginning of it. Also, don't forget to check out my blog at stampinjuliebrown.blogspot.com because that is where I put step-by-step -step instructions of sometimes cards I show here, um, cards that I create that I don't do videos on will always be on my blog. Hey, Shanine. Oh, we have a big crowd tonight. Let's hope everything works, right? <laughs> All right, so let's talk about what we're going to be using tonight. So out of the mini catalog, we're going to be using the Ranoculus, or I'm, I'm sorry, Ranoc I can't say it right, Ranoculus Romance um, stamp set and dies, and oh, not the daffodil dies, sorry, I was supposed to take that off, um, but you'll notice all of the different numbers. The first number right next to the name is like for the stamp set for the Ranoculus Romance, and then you'll see the two asterisks with another number, and that's if you want to buy the bundle. So that's if you want the, the, the stamp set and the bundle. And, of course, you get 10% off. Okay, real quick, real quick, I just need to remind everybody, only seven days left to get free celebration items. So, guys, if you've been sitting on the fence and you're not sure about joining a team, well, one, I'd love you to join my team. But uh, remember that we only have seven days left. Right now, the joining is uh, you get two free stamp sets uh, with your joining bonus, along with all the other stuff that they give you. So it's a really good deal right now to join. So um, keep that in mind. Um, if you're thinking about rejoining, we only have seven days left. Um, but if you're just looking for the free celebration items, um, we have until the 28th. Remember, this is February, short month. So we only have until the 28th. Hey, Connie, so glad to have you here tonight. So just a, just a quick reminder of that information. All right, well, let's look at the set that we're going to be using. Um, so this is the, Ren Ren I can't even say it right, Ranunculus Romance. I even practiced on Google. You can go into Google, and it lets you practice saying it. And I said it wrong every time, so... I think I'm hopeless. I really like these types of stamps, and I don't use them enough, but I love the ones that have all of these like little fun, vintage-looking stamps inside of. One of my favorite all-time stamp sets was Gorgeous Grunge. I don't know how many of you remember that one, but I loved it, and I used it all the time. And so this one kind of, I mean, it's it's, a, it's different than that one because that one was kind of like splotches and dots and, and other things, but it also uh, had the same effect when you made a card with it. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to be making two cards. The first one is kind of a simple stamping card just to show you how to get that vintage effect on the card. And then the second one is a fun fold card. And the fun fold card, I'm going to absolutely tell you guys, it is, um, let me just switch to, to me, 
The, the fun fold card, I totally stole this idea from Rose Ward. Um, I follow her all the time and I love her to death. And she made this really fun, fun fold card with this whole vintage um, set. Now I added some things and I changed some measurements from what she did. Um, but it's the same basic idea that she did. Um, and I changed the colors um, because I wanted to use my favorite colors. And so I'll introduce those in just a little bit. So let's get started with this set. And so for again, for this first one, we're just going to be doing like a simple stamping one. And so um, one of the best colors to use when you're wanting a vintage look is very vanilla. Hey, Brenda. Um, very vanilla is one of the best colors you can use um, because it helps bring that vintage look. So what I wanted to do with this one is um, I'm going to use some browns and some blues for this one. So we're going to start out with um, crumb cake. And we're going to use this, um, this little stamp. And this stamp, actually, if you look at it, it it taught it looks like it's a receipt from a jewelry store. So fun, huh? So sometimes you kind of want to read what the stamps say. So what I'm going to do is, and I don't have no rhyme or reason for the way that I put this on here, but I'm just going to stamp this. And you'll notice that I'm doing full full strength, and then I'm coming in, you know, some off the page, some on the page. And I'm just, I'm not being like real select. Let me see if I can get this a little closer so you guys can actually see the stamping. And this was with crumb cake. Then I'm going to come in with soft suede. And we're going to come in with this long, um, I guess it's kind of like lace. Um, I guess you could call that lace. That's kind of the design on this one. Again, it's all part of this stamp set. And so we're just going to come in and again, you guys can see I'm not being like overly careful with the way that I'm sticking this on there. I'm just kind of stamping. Okay. That's part of the fun of this one is you just kind of stamp. To me, vintage stamping is basically just stamping on top of each other. And then it has this other really cute, um, I'm not even sure what this is. Some of you guys might know what this is. It has a number and it says Lily. So it, it could be like maybe the pearls that they bought. It could have been like the, the tag that was on the pearls maybe. I'm not sure. So again, I'm just going to come in with this one. And you'll notice I'm just stamping over the top of some of these sections. Just trying to kind of fill this in a little bit. All right. And that was crumb cake as well. Sorry, I should have told you the number. So then it's got this fun, like, souvenir postage stamp. And I think it's of the Eiffel Tower. And we're going to come in with some mossy meadow just to give it some color. And again, I, I, I have no, oh, I shouldn't have, I didn't want to re-ink that. Um, I don't really have any rhyme or reason for how I'm stamping this on there. But you'll see I'm doing like second, third, fourth, fifth generation stamping here. Um, because I just kind of wanted that to be kind of pretty light on there. All right. And it, this takes a while for all of it to kind of come together. I guess I should be cleaning these as I go or they're going to be a hot mess. So let me just stop for one second and clean the ones that I've used. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the flower stamp that is part of this stamp set, which is, that's that ranunculus that I can't say, that's the type of flower it is. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> All right, and I'm going to just come in with Knight of Navy, and I am doing, you know, kind of some masculine, but I kind of feel like that's what's going to give me the, my vintage look. Now, the next card that I'm doing, I am bringing in some lighter colors. Kind of, not really. So I'm just going to stamp up or ink up my flower. And again, I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to stamp. Let's see. Maybe bring it in at that angle. Okay. So I've just kind of brought that in. 
in different, you know, I, I wasn't like real select. I just kind of messily stamped it. Now I'm kind of not liking this clear area here. So I think I'm gonna come in with this stamp and just fill that in, which is, that's something nice about when you're doing the vintage look, you can just kind of fill in as you go. Okay, now the thing about, I will, I will give you a warning about when you're doing this, when you first start doing all this, it doesn't look that good. You're just kind of looking at it going, hmm, I don't know if I really like this. And th this is one of those cards that as you're building it, it starts to look better. So now what I'm going to do, again, so there's a couple of ways that you can make this a vintage card. Now I happen to have like a, um, a distressing tool that I can use, and I think I will use that on this one, but I, this is a distressing tool that I got a long time ago. And, but you can use scissors to do the same thing, or you can tear the paper. And so basically all this does is it just kind of distresses the edge. Um, and that just kind of, again, makes it have a vintage look. Now, the one cool thing I'm going to tell you about this is I have a couple of people. I have one of the ladies that's part of my team. And then I have um, a really good friend and customer of mine that has gotten into, they're, they're called junk journals. Um, I don't know if any of you know what those are, um, but they're pretty fun. Uh, I have not made one yet, but I've been watching how to make them. And I think that this type of, of a stamp set would be really good for the junk journals because the junk journals are kind of a vintage, um, at least the ones I've seen have been, you know, they, they're very vintage looking. Um, and it would be really cool to uh, do something like this in those journals and make it uh, look, you know, much more vintage than if you were just stamping in it. So let me just, I'm going to dump that over here. Okay, so I've distressed my edges. Again, you could tear this and make it look distressed. There's a lot of different ways that you could do that. So now I'm going to take our blending brush and I'm going to take my crumb cake and I'm just tapping. I know you guys can't see that, but I'm just tapping in there. And then Remember when you're using your blending brushes, always start off your page. So I'm going to start in a swirling motion and I'm just going to come in and just do a light covering onto this paper. And this is kind of what makes it look vintage. Hey, Vanessa. So this is part of the de-stressing process of, you know, besides the stamping, this is the other part of the distressing process uh, for these vintage type cards. And you can see I'm not, you know, I don't, I, I'm not worrying about getting a ton on here. Um, and so let me see if I can bring it closer. But see, it's looking pretty cool, isn't it? So then let me go ahead and close up these inks. Because you guys know me, if there is a way for me to stick, actually, I'm going to kind of leave them to the side because I'm going to do the inside of the card as well. If there's a way for me to get my hand in it, I'm going to find that way. So then I'm using a crumb cake base. And I am going to um, take some linen thread and wrap a couple of times around the middle. Again, this is like a really simple, quick card. All right, so let me just, and I'm probably using way more thread than I need to. And so then I'm just going to take this. Now, I usually will wrap this around this whole little section because that, for me, just kind of helps um, helps it to tie it in place. Oh, Brenda, I'm, I'm or that's Shanine. Glad you're liking this. It's just a really fun technique, this, this antiquing, or you can call it antiquing, vintage. It's just a really fun look. And then I'm just going to spread this 
apart just to give it more oomph there. And I'm going to tie the bow in a minute. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to mat this onto um, a Knight of Navy. But I'm going to put it on here first. Sorry, I paused because I <laughs> didn't know where I'd set my Stampin' Seal Plus. It's like, go figure. All righty. So we're going to take the Knight of Navy. Now, the one thing, the one neat thing about this um, vintage look is you guys can get really creative with the colors that you put together uh, and just make this look so super cool. But I do, for, for the stamping part of it, I usually do use more of the neutral colors um, and, uh, and then bring in the pops of color. That's kind of the, the trick to the vintage look is bringing in those pops of color. Okay, so then we're just going to set that like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and tie myself a little bow here. Now this does come with the dies that we're going to use. Um, I think I'm using like one of the dies here in just a second on this one. And on, on the fun fold card that we're fixing to do next, um, I did the die cutting ahead of time. Okay, so there's that so far. And then I'm going to bring in um, just a scrap. I don't even know what size this is, but it's a scrap of very vanilla. And um, I want to bring in this hello, which is part of that stamp set. It's the, one of the little sentiments. And we're just going to ink this up. And I'm just going to put it right in the middle. And I wasn't even worried about getting this one like perfectly straight because I'm fixing to cut it out with one of the dies. It's like a little baby die. Oh, hey, Bubba. <laughs> he keeps saying hi to me, huh? All right, I'm going to bring in my baby stamp and cut machine for this one. So here, here's my baby. Oh, I guess I need to bring you guys out. Oh, I see. Wrong, wrong way. Okay. And this is the little die that comes in the die set. And so I'm just going to cut, use that to cut this little hello out. So let me just run that through. Hopefully that'll stay still without me taping it. Oopsies. And this is something else. Sometimes we forget to use these little teeny tiny dies that come in our sets. But look how cute that is. Little tiny label. And I know you guys can't see it, but it does. Uh, let me see if I can get it close enough. It does kind of have some raised edges. I don't think you guys can see it real clear. Sorry. But sometimes, you know what? The camera just does not do justice to what we're putting together. Okay. And then again, I just cut this. Um, uh, and it, hopefully this, I'm hoping this piece will be just a smidgen bigger. Yep, that's perfect. So it's a smidgen bigger. And so I'm just going to bring in some liquid glue. So my liquid glue can be, I use this, I helped um, our youth activities I designed a vision board and we made one of those in a youth activity and I was letting everybody use my glue. So when I got it home, I was frantically, uh, you know, all the lids didn't get shut, all that good stuff. Okay, so there's the little hello. And then again, I'm going to use the liquid glue one more time. But I wanted to use our, li our liquid glue because as you guys know, this glue is really good. It, um, it, gives them a, it gave them about, about a whole 10 seconds to put it together, but then it also holds really good. And I just thought that would be so important for those vision boards that we designed. So let me just, okay, so the little hello is going to go right there. And then I'm going to do the inside, and then I'll finish 
Um, the front, I'm just gonna add some embellishments. But for the inside, again, we're just gonna attach. Um, I'm gonna do this first because I'm gonna be stamping off the edge. So again, I'm just gonna bring in those, those same three um, stamps that I used. But this time I want them to be really light. Um, that was probably a little too light, but it's there. <laughs> Let me st stamp over the top of that. Okay, so there we go. And then we're going to bring in, where's it at? Okay. And then we'll bring in this one. And this one we'll, we will stamp off as well. I just, I want this, you can see I want this to be really light down here. Okay, and so we'll do that one like right there. So again, we're just trying to get that grungy look. We'll bring that in and then we'll bring in our flower like so. So I'll bring this closer so you can see it. But that's what the bottom looks like now. And think about this, guys. This would look really awesome on your envelope as well, right? For those of you that like to do your envelope, this would be so cool on the flap of the envelope. See, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about all of you that decorate your envelopes. I'm not one of those people, but hey. And so um, for this one, they, it kind of had some limited sentiments. So I'm going to pick a sentiment from um, one of our, you know, celebration guys. You got seven more days to get this puppy. Um, so I put hello on the front and... Um, Let's see, what do we want to put? We'll just put, um, how about if we just make it a happy birthday one? That's easy. And we always need birthdays, right? Always need birthdays. And this is actually one, even though it has flowers on it, this is actually one I think would be okay for a guy because it's got kind of the blues and the browns and all of that fun Color. So we're going to use the Knight of Navy. I can't even see my lines because I'm stamped. Let's hope, let's see if I can get this straight. Okay, and then we'll just put that happy birthday right there. And then we're going to add this to... the inside of the card and then we're going to finish up the front of this card and then this one is going to be done but you know sometimes we you know and granted I did use one of the dies <laughs> for this one but granted we could have cut this out on our own but I just wanted to show you guys how you know just the stamp set is going to make beautiful beautiful cards and depending on how long the fun fold card takes me I might just show you not not a full other card but I'm going to show you a a way to do the vintage where it's not covering like the whole front of the card so we'll see if I have time to do that for you tonight I guess I could just take the time but I don't like these to be overly long because you know our attention span is only so long okay so then there's the there's the front hello so far and then there's the inside isn't that fun just putting that down there at the bottom sorry I've got some glue on this and then what I decided to do for this one was bring in our um, brushed metallic um, adhesive back dots because I just thought that this kind of fit with the mint the vintage look and so um, let me just grab my take a pick tool and we're just going to bring in some of this, like, um, I call these kind of the antique looking ones. Ah, I don't think I have enough putty on the end. All right, let's pick it up this way. Either way, it works. So we're just going to bring these in. And let's see, where do I want to put this? Let's put that one there. And let's put this one there. 
All right, and you could you could put a lot more on there, but I don't think it needs that many more. But see how fun those look on there? So how fun is this card? Do you guys like the vintage look? Isn't it fun? So yay! So card one, done. Okay, now the second one, like I said, totally stole this from Rose Ward. Um, I was watching her do this fun fold card, um, and she was using the whole vintage look as well. Um, but she used completely different colors, and um, she uh, kind of changed it. I changed the size of, of this card. Um, she had more of the background showing, and I chose not to do that. So, anyway. Okay, so you're going to, for your base on this one... Oh, I'm so glad you like vintage cards. Oh, Janet, I'm glad you guys liked it. So for this one, I used Smoky Slate as one of the bases. And um, this one was um, five and a half by six and a half, scored it two and a quarter. And again, all of this will be on my blog later. And then I'm using, um, I'm doing, so my favorite colors are greens, and purples. So that's what I'm going to use for this vintage card is greens and purples. And so this is the um, soft succulent card base. And this one is five and a quarter by eight scored at four. Like I said, Rose did completely different sizes than I did, but this is just what I liked. Now for this one, because we have the grays, we're going to be using um, Black Memento ink as one of our colors. We're going to be using Basic Gray. So these are completely different than what I just used. And we're going to be using Evening Evergreen as um, some of the pop color. Okay? So, and what we're going to do is... We're just gonna go around and kind of down this center here and around these edges. We don't have to really worry about the middle because the middle is going to be covered by the other card base. Okay, so again, I'm just inking up and I'm just gonna stamp this a couple of times um, and I'm just going around the edges And you'll see I'm just kind of turning it as I go, just to make sure I get a good coverage. And see, I've got some of it upside down, some of it sideways, just all sorts of fun stuff. And so then I'm gonna bring in that lace one, and that's the one I'm gonna use the basic gray, okay? And so again, we're just gonna bring that in and add that. And you'll notice that I just kind of keep stamping and I don't re-ink because you want it to be darker and lighter all the way around. And then we're going to come in with the little post-it stamp. And um, that one I, did I use basic gray or I, no, I think I did, I think I did this one in, in the black as well. And so again, most of this is not even going to be seen but it's just about getting that look that we're looking for. Um, and I'm not going to bring in my third color or this third stamp. Um, oh, you know what? I need to clean that stamp. I just looked at that. So for this one, I just used the Black Memento and the, the Basic Gray. Now I'm going to turn this over because I want to get this side. I don't want to get the back of it, but I do want to get this side as well. So we're going to do the same thing. This one we need to be a little bit more careful because we really don't want to go over that edge right there. All right, so there was the, the black. Now let's do the basic gray. And this one, we're just going to bring that in there, across there down there like so and then we're going to bring in <laughs> I keep setting stuff down where I don't know where I've set it 
And again, we're just trying to get a vintage look. All right. So let me just clean these. And I'm going to set this to the side for just a second while we work on the inside of the card. Okay. So we've got this. So it's going to, it looks like that so far. All right. So now what I'm going to do is um, we've got some panels that we need to stamp. And these are the mats. I'm not stamping the mats. I'm just stamping the panels. And these are very vanilla pieces. And I switched back and forth, so I'm trying to remember what size. I believe these are one and three quarters by five. I think that was my final destination with this one. All right, so here we go again, same thing. And this one we can kind of do two at the same time, right? So I can stamp here, stamp there, stamp here, stamp there, stamp up here, stamp there, okay? So let me get this a little bit closer so you guys can see better how this is. Whoa, what just happened? I think it went a little farther than I thought. Let me try to get that moved up so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so then we're going to come in with the basic gray. And again, just stamping, right? And even if, like, I stamped both of them, that's okay, right? Because we're just trying to get color on here or get the color on here. Then we're going to come in with the... Um, with this little stamp all right so it's looking like that now you'll notice they're both looking quite different which that's okay you want it to look a little bit different so now I'm gonna bring in the Eiffel Tower stamp like I did the last one but this time it's gonna be evening evergreen Okay, so the, this is where I'm kind of bringing in my pops of color is with this um, Eiffel Tower stamp. All right, so we're there. Okay, so now I want to do my flower on here, and I chose, I know it's not like purple purple, but it's one of my favorite colors, which is Blackberry Bliss. So this is the color that I chose for the flowers. And let me just clean these other ones off, even though I'm going to be using them again. The nice thing is you really don't have to clean these off right away as you're doing this because we're gonna be doing another full piece here. Um, but you don't always have to clean them off because you're doing so many different um, pieces. Okay, so we're going to ink up that same flower and I'm going to come in here with that flower and then across the top with the flower. Whoops, <laughs> I almost went to my chamois. All right, and then this one we're going to maybe do this one up here and down there. So there's the flowers. Yay, pretty, right? Okay, so to get my vintage look on this one, I brought in, oh my gosh, I was setting that on top of something. I'm going to actually use the Evening Evergreen to make this, to do the vintage part of this. So just like I did last time, let me go out just a little bit here. Oh, I keep going the wrong direction. Okay. So again, I'm just tapping and please remember, start off your page and then come in. And I'm just getting the edges here. So I'm gonna tap again and just kind of turn that. Start off, come on. And you want to leave some of the very vanilla in the middle. So you don't wanna on the last one, I kind of went over the whole thing, but with this one, I want to leave like splotches of the very vanilla. 
Okay, so again, we're coming in. Oops, see, I didn't quite start off the page, so now I've got to fix that. It was, see how it kind of leaves that mark? That's why you always want to start off and then come on to what you're doing. All right, so that is our two panels. Ta-da! All right, so we're going to go ahead and mount these onto um, their mats. I'm going to try to leave my, my stamp pads open because uh, I'm going to need them for the next piece that we're doing. And like I said, I did do some die cutting, but I did it ahead of time. But I will go over what I used so that you guys will know what I used. So now we're just going to mat these onto the soft succulent pieces. And I believe these soft succulent mats are two by five and a quarter. Like I said, I changed the sizes from what Rose Ward did. Just a little bit um, because it was just, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's our preference, right? Sometimes we see things that other people do and we really like the, the basic concept, but then we change it up. Okay, so this is where it can sometimes get confusing with this card. So this is our card base and then it's really natural. Trying to get you guys out all the way. It's really natural to want to put this in like this, but we put it in backwards so that it opens like this. Okay? So when the card, like, it's basically going to kind of close like this. So we're going to put our adhesive on the back side of this piece. And then we're just going to center this. If I can get it centered. This is so hard when I can't like completely lean over. Does that look straight? It doesn't look straight to me. Okay, hold on. Let me pull that up. Sorry, it didn't look quite straight to me once I got it closed. So let's see. All right, let's try that again. And it's also kind of hard to get this over here because there's a bunch of stamping on here, so it's hard to see that edge as well. All right, let me just try to lay this down softly and see if I... Okay, that looks straight to me. Okay, so that piece goes there. Then one of these pieces is going to go on this inside here. So there was a joke among my children. Um, when they were growing up, they, all, they always used to get into a fight over what my favorite color was. And... Um, I always liked greens and purples, and so they would ask me what my favorite color is, and depending on what mood I was in that day, it would either be green or purple. And so some of my kids thought my favorite color was purple my whole life, and the other ones thought it was green. And they used to get into these arguments about it all the time on who was right, when in fact they were both right. <laughs> uh. We parents, we can mess our kids up, can't we? So there was that the debate and then the de a, a debate between Pepsi and Coke, which Coke was my favorite, but my mom hated Coke. And so she gave me such a hard time for drinking Coke that I always made sure I had a lot of Pepsi in the house for when she came. And so again, totally confused my kids. They had no clue what my favorite actually was. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far. All right. So now we're going to stamp our front. Whoops. All 
All right, so now we're gonna bring this in and we're just gonna do the same steps all over again. I know this might be really tedious for you guys to watch because I'm basically just kind of doing the same thing over and over and over again. <laughs> but um, I just want you guys to really understand the whole process here uh, and see how easy that this is to do. All right, so now we're just gonna come in at angles, up and down, sideways, cross, okay? And again, it just, there, there's no rhyme or reason for the way that I put this down, um, which I know for some of you could be problematic because you like things to be all nice and neat. Um, that is not this card, <laughs> just so you know. And then we're gonna come in with that pop of color with this stamp. And like, like you can see, I just kind of just keep stamping. Okay, then we're gonna come in with our flower with the Blackberry Bliss. I hope you guys like my color choices. Um, I know it's, it's, it's not, um, like I've seen, I've seen a lot of vintage cards where they bring in lots of pinks and purples and, and I do have the purples, but I haven't seen too many that have brought in the evening evergreen and the soft succulent, but those are my favorite. And so that's why I wanted to do these colors. Okay. Let me think. Okay. So now we're going to come in and we're going to do our little with our, our blending brushes, we're gonna, this is kind of called the distressing process. Now you guys will notice I did not use my distressing tool this time because I wanted to show you that you don't have to use the distressing tool to make this look um, distressed. You can just use these blending brushes um, and it really is enough to make it get, have that distressed look. And again, you don't want to like cover up um, a lot of the, you want, you want to leave some of that very vanilla peeking through. All right, so there we go. Okay, so I think, trying to remember, oh, you know what, while I've got these out, I'm gonna go ahead and do the inside of the card just so then I can get these out of the way. So again, same thing for the inside of the card. But this, this is the one where you really want this to be very light down here in this corner. You don't want these to be really dark. So you're going to stamp off several times before you add that on there. Okay. And then we'll bring this one in. And then we'll bring our flower in, which it already has ink on it, and it's probably enough ink. And it was. I didn't even have to re-ink that. So again, I just wanted to get that bottom, bottom done for you. And while I've got this out, we're going to go ahead and do the inside. And so what I chose to do for the inside is this is one of the sentiment stamps. It says, thanks for sharing your heart. Um, and so we're just going to put this on the inside like so and set this to the side. Hopefully I don't forget where I set it. And let me just clean these stamps off really quick so that I don't stick my hand in them. Because everything else is going to pretty much be um, I know I'm going to use this one one more time, and I believe the Rich Razzleberry one more time. So let me get rid of all the other colors. So I hope you guys are kind of liking the grays and the greens and the purples, because like I said, it's not, it's not colors that I've seen anyone put together yet. Uh, and so I just thought, you know what? I'm going to take my favorites, and I'm going to combine them and see how they turn out. Okay, so now to finish this card up, 
what we're going to do is we're going to bring in, um, this is the Evening Evergreen Open Weave ribbon. And I'm just going to go ahead and tie a knot. Like a so. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are liking the colors. You know, sometimes, you know, I think they're my favorite colors, so I always think it's beautiful. But, you know, other people may not. So, <laughs> so and I, I don't want to pull this, like, super tight, but obviously tight enough that it's going to hold the knot. So I'm just kind of trying to be real careful here because I, I want the knot, but I don't want it, like, super tight. And then I'm going to bring in my snips. And I'm going to snip it so that it's going to basically have the ribbon off to one side. Okay. But before I do that, I'm going to build um, some stuff that's going to go behind the ribbon. Now, let me show you this die set. Okay. Because obviously this die. So like this die right here, I stamped one of the flowers and then it cut this out. And then it also has this other really pretty, like, leaf with flowers on it, and it will actually cut this out, too. And then I also used these three dies, and I used our in-color vellum to cut, isn't this pretty? Isn't this die pretty? This one's really pretty. To cut that out. And then, oh, where's my leaf? Oh. And then I did the in-color vellum to cut this leaf out. And then this is the new um, specialty paper and it is called Supple Shimmer. And they call this kind of a blue color and it does have blue highlights, but I think it's more kind of, I mean, as I even, I know you guys may not be able to see this, but as I move it around in the light, I see different shades. You can actually put this with some pinks and purples, and you start to see those shades in there too. So really fun paper. Um, and these come in, like, this one is the in colors, and then this one comes in, um, let me show you the two colors, because I've been playing with them, um, these two colors here. And then let me show you, I wanna show you, I cut this out of this, and look how pretty that came out. Isn't that beautiful? I love this dye, this dye is beautiful. All right, so now we're gonna put this together. And so for this one, because a lot of this is gonna be hidden, I am just gonna go ahead and bring in some glue dots um, and stick those just kind of in this center area. I think I'm actually just gonna use a couple of them because remember what I've told you, if you're building on top of something, you don't always have to like get it complete oh, oops <laughs> get it completely like glued down so we're gonna stick this right here and then um, for this piece again I think I can use a glue dot um, that will be somewhat hidden I'm gonna stick a glue dot kind of right here in this center for this tip to fit on and then I'm gonna put one just on one of the leaves right here. Because again, you don't wanna be able to see the glue dot, which the nice thing about this shimmer vellum is it actually hides a lot of that. Okay, so that's gonna go like so. And then for these pieces, I'm actually gonna bring in um, the liquid glue, but I think I'm gonna bring in my handy dandy <laughs> little tool that I learned about that makes this go on. And, I, and I'm and i just doing kind of the lower leaves, not the upper leaves. And I'm just gonna set that one like so. And then we're gonna get this one as well. And you'll notice I'm not doing all the leaves because again, I like that it gives it dimension. I like that when you um, don't glue everything down, it helps to give your card dimension as well. 
All right, so now I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna run some um, Stampin' Seal Plus so that I can, um, oops, what happened? So that I can catch my ribbon. But now I gotta figure out which part was the, okay, this is the, uh-oh. There, okay. I had to tie it a little bit tighter so that I knew where the where the end was. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this and it's gonna just go around that back. And then this one, um, and I think I want this piece up here like so. And then I'm just gonna take this and we're gonna wrap it over here. And then I am going to put some more Stampin' Seal Plus. And we're gonna pop this on. Now remember, it closes like this, so this is the front of our card. And so this is gonna go on here like so. Let's try to get it centered. Okay, so it's gonna sit like so. And then what I'm gonna do with this piece is I'm gonna bring in some Wink of Stella because I want you to see what Wink of Stella does because this is what it looks like now. But I am gonna add some Wink of Stella. And basically what the Wink of Stella does is it kind of blends um, the ink. Um, so it's kind of, it kind of becomes like a blender brush um, as you add it to your flower. Not to mention it makes it pretty and shiny, right? Which is what all of us love. And I'm just going to kind of hit the leaves, um, you can do the stems as well if you wanted to. Let's see what that looks like. I just don't know if I'm good enough to stay in the lines of the stems when I'm trying to go fast. So let me see if I can bring this in a little closer so you can kind of see. See how pretty it's coming out with the Wink of Stella? Yeah, let's get a high five for Wink of Stella, right? It's so cool makes everything shiny and pretty. And who doesn't like a little bit of bling? The easy way, right? So I am trying to follow those stems. But see how pretty that came out? I know, it really is magic, Connie. I agree. Can you guys, I don't know if I, I can get it to where you guys can see the sparkle. Let me see. Yeah, look how shimmery and shiny it is. <gasps> Pretty! Huh? <laughs> it's like, everybody give a clap. Okay. So, oh, and then what I want to do is, um, I'm not going to re-ink this, but it still has some on. So, again, I'm going to come in and just get the edges of this flower. And we're just going to distress it a little bit. Just adding some of that ink and it may have already dried so I'm really not getting a bunch of that color on here but I believe it's enough that it's going to um, make it not you know you don't want it to look so starking uh, what am I trying to say uh, you don't want it to have that big contrast to the front of your card so see I just kind of added hey Patty uh, yeah, I don't think that worked very good. So I am going to have to, let me ink that up just a little bit. I thought I had enough on there, but I'm going to be like super duper careful and really start off because <laughs> I don't want it to be like super dark, but I do want it to get those edges. There we go. Much better. Oh my gosh. Sorry guys, my husband let my dogs out. 
and they are on their way down here my puppies all right so they are actually fighting um between my legs right now so if you guys hear me scream or screech it's because they accidentally might nip me as they're having this battle between my legs down here oh my goodness <laughs> uh, telling you my husband's a bad babysitter okay so now what I want to do is I want to bring in some um, some of the mini Stampin' Dimensionals and we are going to pop this up like so and I, again I'm just adding dimensionals I think I tend to add more mini dimensionals than I do large dimensionals just because I feel like we don't get quite the coverage um, but sometimes because there's like little pieces like this over little sections um, you kind of need these mini dimensionals to you know fit without having to you know cut them and make them smaller so let me get all of that out of the way and bring that card back in and we are just going to basically put this over that ribbon like so. All right, and then a couple finishing touches here. Again, don't really know the sizes of these. I think that this is an inch. Oh, I don't have my, here, let me look. No, I think, okay, so this one looks like it's about seven eighths of an inch. This one is about three quarters of an inch. And I'm just going to bring in this little sentiment that says, just for you. Oh, Flora, I'm glad you're liking this one. And let's try to get this lined up. Because I've stamped so much, I can't see my lines. Whoops. Just for you. But we can't just let it look like that, right? Because we've been um, doing the vintage look the whole time. So I'm going to come back in with this stamp. Ink it up, stamp it off, and then just stamp over the top of it so it looks like that. Isn't that just such a cool look? I used to do so many vintage cards, and then I just kind of, like, quit doing them. And I forgot, I think it was because Gorgeous Grunge went away. How many of you had that stamp set, Gorgeous Grunge, or still have that stamp set? It was my one of my all-time favorites. And I used to do these types of cards a lot when I had that stamp set. All right, so we're just going to fit that, if I can get it to go in straight... I am having issues with straight tonight. All right, there we go. So that's going to go on like that. We're going to take some um, dimensionals. And these are the larger ones. I just grabbed the ones that were the closest to me, which I don't know where those mini ones went because I just, you know how that goes when you're creating. You tend to just throw things to the side. And I'm leaving this middle open because this is actually going to straddle that flower right so we're just going to come in like so and it's just going to cover that bottom stem let's see if i can get this straight oh susie and mel and brenda yeah you guys all have gorgeous grunge i know love it Okay, and then so where's my piece for the inside, right? Isn't this a really cool fun fold card as well? Besides the whole vintage look. Like I said, I, I, I watched Rose because she did do vintage cards. Um, but she used Petal Pink and Fresh Freesia as her like colors. And she used like the crumb cakes and the browns, but I didn't want to do the browns. I wanted to do the green. 
Okay, so I'm gonna trim this just a little up here. And then I'm gonna come in with our in color jewels and we're gonna pull up some of these soft succulent ones. And remember, these are also kind of like pearlized, meaning that, you know, they, uh, they kind of uh, have different colors based on how you hold things. And so I'm just gonna put a couple up here. So I'm gonna put three over there and then maybe put one right there on that one. All right, so there's our card, guys. So there's our vintage card, fun fold card, thanks to Rose Ward. <laughs> but do you like the way that we like stamped this so it actually shows that vintage coming out the back as well? And, and the other thing too is you could completely design this different and you could like do all of this stamping and you could build the flower all like this whole section over here could be built over here with the ribbon around here and you could close it like this as well. All right. So everybody be honest. How many of you guys looked at this stamp set and said, mm, don't really know what I would do with it. Right. I mean, I did as soon as I saw all the, like, grungy stuff <laughs> that goes with this stamp set. So let me bring in both cards so that you can see um, the finished products of both. And then, what time is it? 8.02. Okay, I, I want to just show you really quick how you could not put as much on here and it would still look cute on the front. But what do you think of these two cards? Aren't they pretty? Okay, so hang with me for just a second. I'm going to use these colors. But I want to just show you guys how you don't have to completely fill this. Let me get a clean side here. You don't have to completely fill this to make it look pretty. So I'm just going to do, like, very sparingly... I'm going to do one there, one there, and one there. And then I'm going to come in with the basic gray because I just want to show you guys how you miss this set altogether. Well, it's on page 54 of the mini catalog. Okay, and we can just come in like that and like that. And then just bring this one in. And I'm keeping it all just really simple. So for those of you that are on my team that, you know, want to do some simple stamping, this, this is the simple stamping version right here. Um, evening Evergreen. And I'm not going to make a card with this. I'm just going to show you, um, show you how um, you, you can make this look pretty with just a minimal amount on here. It's not gonna look as extravagant as the other one, but it still is really stinking cute. Okay, and then all I'm gonna do with the flowers is bring this one in there, bring that one in there. Okay. So it's much more simple, right? But do you see how pretty that is? And then let me just kind of, let me grab a Blackberry Bliss piece. I'm just going to get a whole piece of cardstock. Because I want to just show you guys how, if you mat it like it's so, right? Look at that. How pretty is that? right? So look how quick that was. So that's a way of doing it um, for people who are just learning how to stamp. If you don't want to do the blending brush and bring in the blending, you don't have to. You could just do this, right? 
because it really is that simple um, with this vintage look. Alrighty, so this is my for simple stamp, simple, simple stamping, you know, and then bringing it up a notch and then full force. All right, so there you guys go. There they are. And like I said, I'll finish this card and put this one on my blog so that you can see the finished product of what this will look like. Um, and I may go ahead and do some blending um, on here. But I just wanted to show this set to you guys because I'm positive that most of you didn't see it. And then don't forget the beautiful dies that come along with it. I mean, this is, this is, yeah. This is a beautiful, beautiful set that can create some amazing, amazing cards, right? Um, and so just real quick, it's right here on page 54. Because it doesn't look that exciting in the catalog. <clears throat> so, I mean, that's what we have to learn, right? Is that sometimes it doesn't look that exciting in the catalog. Um, and hopefully that's my job, is to show you guys some wonderful things that you can do with these stamp sets. Um, to get you guys thinking. So again, remember, only seven days left um, for the free celebration. If you guys have ever thought about joining to get the discount, um, contact me. I'll talk to you about that because there's a great joining um, special going on right now. Because it's celebration, you can get two extra free. This could be one of the stamp sets that you could get for free. Um, to join right now. So anyway, guys, I appreciate all of you. Um, and I hope you guys uh, enjoyed these, these cards tonight. And again, if you're thinking about joining, let me know. Um, and oh, one more thing, just hostess code for this month. Well, maybe. There you guys go. February hostess code. And if you guys came in late, um, thanks to Janet Sherman, I found out that my, you'll notice my YouTube channel looks different because um, she was trying to find it. And I always thought it was under Julie's Creative Stamping because that's what it shows up on my end when I'm on there. But it's actually Julie Brown dot Julie's Creative Stamping. So if you've been looking for me on YouTube and you haven't been able to find me, that's how you find me. And um, if you're watching this on YouTube, then you've already found me. So great. Um, but again, guys, please make sure you like, subscribe, follow, everything that you can do with all of my dis different social medias to help me out. So everybody have a great night. Um, I will see most of you guys next Tuesday with some um, other fun stuff. But sadly, um, celebration will be over by then. So if you guys are wanting to get those last minute celebration items, don't forget that you only have until February 28th to get those orders in. Everybody have a great evening. Appreciate your time, and I'll be talking to you soon. Bye.